Put shot. Three, mm -hmm. two. No, no, no. Okay. Um, welcome to New York. Welcome to Mount Sinai for the peripheral portion of our of, of this uh, MedStream 360 inaugural webcast. We are so proud to be part of this and so proud to support uh, in the education of the global community. We're, uh, I want to introduce our team here at Mount Sinai. Uh, we have to my, to my left, uh, to, my, uh, to my right, I'm sorry, Dr. Vishal Kapoor, uh, who is the director here at Mount Sinai Saint, uh, Morningside. Uh, right behind him, we have Dr. Raman Sharma, who is uh, our, our peripheral assistant director uh, of the endovascular program here at Mount Sinai. Uh, to Dr. Kapoor's right, we also have Dr. Uh, Osman Jaffer, who is our endovascular fellow, one of two fellows this year, who you'll meet the other fellow next week. To my left, we have Ray Lascano, who is our endovascular nurse practitioner, and, and, um, and I'm Dr. Krishnan. So it's our pleasure to welcome you, and, and it's our pleasure to join, uh, to join in, the, in, the, in this incredible uh, venture of teaching uh, peripheral, coronary, and structural interventions uh, to all of you who are interested out in the world. So I uh, would like to congratulate the entire team, specifically Dr. Samir Mehta, Dr. Samin Sharma, Dr. Greg Stone, Dr. Ron Waxman, Dr. Michael Gibson, uh, uh, to, for really putting this together. It's really incredible uh, what they've done. So without further ado, we have a very interesting live case, a lot of interesting decisions to make, a lot of interesting discussion to have with all, all three of us, um, and, and we'll go ahead and have our, our fellow Dr. Jaffer start this off. Okay, next slide, please. This is a 69-year-old male. He has uh, insulin-dependent diabetes, hypertension, uh, hip fractures, a former smoker. He came to the ER uh, last week with worsening foot pain, essentially with CLI, um, Rutherford uh, Category 5. He had a, a big uh, ulceration, um, the lateral aspect of the left foot. His physical exam is only Doppler, both PT and DP pulses, monophasic. Next. That's a picture of the ulcer that we saw over there. MRI was done, which showed osteomyelitis um, uh, of the uh, left fifth metatarsal. Next slide. This is the picture from last week. You can see he's got a severe stenosis right there, uh, right at the uh, takeoff of the internal iliac going down into the external on the left side. And the runoff over there, you can also see a three-vessel runoff with a short segment CTO in the left SFA and the mid-segment. Next slide. Pullback gradient was done across the common iliac into the external with a gradient of 20. Um, the lesion was dilated with the 7060, and he had a 10060 absolute pro place. Next. This is the post picture with a really nice result. Um, since that time, he's undergone two debridements, vascular surgery, and uh, he's coming back today for the left SFA. So uh, that's a great presentation. And uh, Roman, I mean, do you want to comment? I mean, one of the things here, obviously, you see a, a lesion that's, uh, you know, doesn't look that severe <coughs> in the SFA, but it clearly has caused osteomyelitis uh, in this. And I just want to show you our runoff here. Yeah. Let me just show you our, our angiogram here. I mean, and we've a lot, lot to discuss. We'll get to this first. So, so we'll show you the angiogram. And uh, here you can see the angiogram. Here we go. So our angiogram, there we go, finally. So our angiogram shows proximally, obviously, the SFA has, uh, has some stenosis, uh, nothing really crazy to talk home about, but it's a diffuse lesion, which we're going to talk about, all of us. And then mid, uh, and then uh, mid distal, you can see, as was uh, discussed by Osman, uh, the, the, the lesion is, uh, is a short segment total occlusion with a large collateral, very, very short. And then, dis and then you also have some mild disease at the level of the above knee pop. And then distal, he has three vessel runoff. So first of all, Raman, question to you. Um, obviously, not a. If you look at this lesion, you wouldn't expect the patient to have an ulcer. Uh, what do you think anatomically? The not only this lesion, but all the lesions contributed to this gentleman having this uh, this ulcer that's non-healing, resulting in osteomyelitis. Yeah, I think one of the biggest factors that kind of results so you can. For these, for this patient to present the way that he did, is the fact that he had multiple lesions. Mm -hmm. Each of these lesions, in singularity, probably did not have caused anybody. Some would argue that even that this SP lesion, by in and of itself, such robust collaterals, such good uh, for popliteal disease, they may not even be true claudicans. Right. But then, considering the fact that he had such severe 
iliac disease in conjunction with then this you now distal SFA total lesion. I think that, you know, plus the fact that he's a diabetic, you know, all these risk factors with bad, bad foot care probably resulted in a small wound that unfortunately because of not really the good uh, like foot care and the foot hygiene probably resulted in this local infection resulting in all this. Per perfect. Yeah, but Vishal, what do you, what do you think of, I mean, given the latest data with best CLI, and I think we'd be remiss because this is a lesion that would have been a best CLI patient, right? Possibly. Uh, he has, he's got good vessel target. He likely has good vein. We don't know that, but I'm assuming he does. He has no varicose veins. And we know in that, if you have a good varicose vein, that this patient should should uh, do better with uh, with best CLI, uh, meaning bypass surgery with the vein versus uh, angioplasty or you know what best therapy was available then. So can you comment in the context of best CLI why we chose to do endo in this particular lesion? Well, I guess the first thing, like Raman talked about, it's a multi-level disease. I mean, best CLI was more for ulceration divided into two cohorts, one with patients with endovascular treatment and versus a saphenous venous graft bypass versus one patient with an endovascular treatment and another conduit, which could be a PTFE by uh, graft or anything. So the main benefit that was shown was more in the venous aspect, and that was mainly driven by increased repeat interventions or revascularization in the endovascular arm. But in this case, this is more lesions where it's multi-level, where you have to improve the inflow as well as the outflow to in order to get a real benefit in this case. So in those cases, multi-level were pretty much, that they were mainly focal unilateral lesions and not multi-level lesions that were excluded. <coughs> so it doesn't really fall into the true inclusion criteria of the best CLI trial, trial as well. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. So that's where... Uh, I guess like how Raman talked about treating the inflow first, first iliacs and the SFAs will provide him the complete uh, wound circulation in addition to wound care that would help in the uh, healing aspect. Okay. What about if, let's just say, for example, he didn't have any iliac disease and somehow he did still have that. This lesion would, how would you do that? I, I agree even, with even, you. Even saying that he has a beautiful saphenous vein graft available for for the bypass. Well, I mean, listen, in this case, like Pico was talking about, the short CTO, we know that the chances of reintervention in endovascular arm is when you have CTOs, heavily calcified lesions, long lesions, where they're long using stents. In this case, we can do DC, the data on DCP and stent in short lesion patency is excellent. It's more than 90, 92% at one year. So unless we're talking about longer lesions where it, where it requires longer intervention, whether it be drug-coated balloons or drug-eluting stenting, in these short segment lesions, the patency is pretty much equivalent to if you're doing a surgical bypass. Now the question is, bypass yeah, comes with its own yeah. disadvantages, <clears throat> wound healing, which is already having an issue in this care, diabetic patients not when controlled glucose, are they good candidates for bypass? We have to consider a patient in an entirety rather than just purely based on trial. So I guess that's where mm -hmm. oh, the decision making will. So let, let me just show some of the challenges we had. We got a contralateral access as we normally do. So we had trouble getting through that stent. So what we did was we, we felt we might've been posterior to the stent. We pulled the sheet back, went, went with multiple catheters, unable to get across the sheet. As you can see right there, what we had to do was to go with a long a 45 centimeter, I mean 60 centimeter dilator, rewire this with a, uh, using an eye IM catheter and then a J wire. And then you could see here, once we use IM catheter, J wire switched out and then went with a, again, you can see what we're doing, went with a 45 centimeter uh, uh, a sheet with a 60 centimeter, uh, what is it called, dilator. Yeah, when we're able to track it through the sheet and we were here. So those are some of the challenges that you may face. So right now, I, th I think crossing this is not going to be an issue. So so why don't, why, don't, why, don't, why don't we go ahead and cross this? And then and then what, what I wanted to do was, Raman, you could talk a little bit about the technique of what you're going to do. So obviously, guys, it's not a challenging lesion in the sense of, oh my God, but you never know. You know, we, we've had challenging lesions that we think are nothing. They could embolize, they could be clot, they could be a lot of other things. But I think what's more important rather than cl crossing is the modality of treatment and also what, what, is your, what are you going to treat? How do you assess the lesion and how do you decide what you're going to treat? So Raman's going to go here with a, uh, what are you doing? You're just doing a, a Navi cross yeah. and a glide wire, I so guess. Or a 035, 035 Navi cross. Uh -huh. And in there, there, if I can get this in the chemical yeah. glass, please. You can probably push it in, huh? Yeah, just don't get a drag off. It's a yeah. cook sheet, so that's why. Cook yeah. sheet, yeah. Yeah, the diaphragm. Harder. There, there you go. Okay, good. Yeah, so we have an 035 <laughs> Navi cross here with a. We have a command wire in there, I yeah, believe. Yeah, so we have an uh, oh, when it's stiff command wire yeah. to cross. Part of me is kind of hoping that thing you're in the. Uh, uh, no, I think that's the way it goes. I think no? it Let's see. Yeah, no, that's it. That's yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, real? Part of me is, is kind of hoping that there is a tiny channel there. 
that will kind of make a, a true intimal cross much more feasible. So, we'll see so, how this wire so goes. I mean, he's going to try with an 0-1-4 wire, and I think the choice of wire should be an 0-1-4 here because of the of the fact that you you had such such a short segment. You'd like to stay intraluminal, and I think Vishal already is intraluminal. Up oh, there it is. Oh, there don't loop are. it. No, no, no. So, no. so now yeah. uh, 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 Raman's going to come down, and then he's going to try to just cross it with the tip of the wire. So if Raman gives enough uh, positive pressure here, like in any CTO, is going to cross. The only question is now. The question is, what do you treat, and how do you decide what to treat? So what we're doing now is. We're just pulling this up. Uh, no, you need to get a little map. closer with yeah, the catheter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Raman's just, Rama just going to get the catheter closed. Okay. And Vishal, now he's probably just going to push it through. Go on, second. And then, and then we're going to set up an IVIS. That's and we're going to go with an IVIS to, to understand how it is. Point. So okay. so right now, we're, mm -hmm. we, he's going to go with an intravascular ultrasound catheter once he crosses this wire. So... So you can see we're using an 014 hydrophilic wire, which I think is the good wire for okay, us to floral. start in this particular no, uh, type of lesion. And then, and, then, and then what we'll do is once we cross, there you go. So he's already <laughs> crossed. So now he's going to cross. So we knew that this would not be a challenge crossing. But, but what, what I really want to look at is how, what are you going to treat and how are you going to treat it? Yeah. So once he crosses, now, now, now what I'd like to do is, is uh, Raman, how would you assess what you're going to treat? Obviously, you're going you're gonna to stent, you're going to fix this. Let's do an IVUS and, and look at the lesion first. So I'm going to leave the command wire down in one of the vessels. Probably the perineal is what Raman has chosen. And then, and then we're going to go ahead, walk this up, and then we're going to take a DSA to take a look. So this might have been a lesion that was 99% for a long time, broke down, maybe embolized something from the aorta, and then became 100%. So, so we will go ahead now and take a DSA of, the, of this particular vessel uh, where they cross to see whether it's thrombotic or not. So show me the, the DSA, Vishal. Can oh, you, yeah. Can so you push forward? Before we continue, there's a question actually from the audience asking okay, what sheet do we have in there? We have a seven French. For The only reason we went with a seven is because we're doing a live case. You can do this with a six French. Cine, oh. mm -hmm. <laughs> you can do this with a six French. So we picked oh, a seven second. French we cook. Know because of the fact that uh, we needed a hydrophilic sheath because of that freshly laid stent that was there that, that, that obviously was, was not uh, you know, allowing us to go up and over. So now we are going to take a picture. Yeah, let's do a take a picture, guys, picture. first with, before the IVIS. Can we have a picture, please? Oh, no, no, here. Is this working? A little bit of some technical difficulties, but... Well, so we're gonna just gonna inject by hand, uh, you know, uh, at this stage. Well, yeah, so, bounce sign, and we find a way. Okay, Cindy, now. So we're gonna inject this. Ah, so you can see here very clearly, it's a focal non-occlusive lesion, or looks like a ruptured plaque. So we're gonna go with the IVUS. Mm -hmm. Can we fix this, guys, please? Yeah. Okay, Flora. So we're gonna go with an IVUS. We're gonna go live with the IVUS. Let's go ahead. I want to start from the distal to proximal and take a look. Can you please put Take up the IVIS images, please? Let's go. Okay. Yeah. Let's and we crossed. Very Perfect. Good. Go all the way down, please, further. Who is it? Yeah. Okay. Go down further. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, so now if you go live on the IVIS image, and Raman, can you go a little further as well? Yeah, of course. And pull yeah, back. Way. So you can see the IVIS is always going to find lesions, right? Yeah. So let, let's pull back here. So you can see as, as the IVIS is being recorded. Start please. recording, please. We zoom in. Can you see the IVIS, everyone? I hope so. Please tell us if you can. can you zoom in? And 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 uh, zoom in. you 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 could see that the IVIS image is right there. You can zoom in. More. And no, and and more. you could see that you know as he's coming back slower, please. There's a tremendous amount of plaque nice. in the plaque burden in this vessel. Yeah. So the issue is, do you treat the entire vessel or not? And that's why I wanted to do this case. So how do we physiologically say, well, this is enough, that's not enough? As you Blur can see, thing. the vessel. Had, look at the amount of Blur plaque thing. in this particular yeah. vessel. So if you look at the ultrabrasic mm -hmm. ultrasound, yeah. you have. Have, you know, 50% plaque, 40% plaque, 30% plaque, and currently at this stage, we don't have a simple way of knowing whether we've adequately restored flow to the foot. So what we've started doing, can you go to pressure, guys? I have no pressure. When, 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 when you start going, keep pulling back. When you start doing this, it's very important not to just do beautify the vessel. I know in the coronaries, uh, and for those of you who don't right peripherals, there. you know that obviously There's you don't want you, you don't want to have yeah. stenosis. You'd like to go ahead and you know expand your stents and so on and so forth. In in the endovascular space, especially in the SFA, I think it's about treating gradients in both the SFA and the it's iliac, and not really vessel beautification. Yeah. So as you can see at this level, you know, Raman's been pulling back, especially in the pop that was diffused plaque. Even here, there's only a three millimeter lumen when the SFA looks about, should be about six. So, so therefore, you have to think about this eccentric plaque. Mm. Well, how do you do 
it. Do you, do you eat the entire SFA? Do you do a full metal jacket? And this is part of the reason a simple lesion, which can look simple, is becomes quite complex when wow. you're talking about a Rutherford 5 oh, or wow. 6 patient. You, if you can see the ultrasound, you can see the level like of plaque there, yeah. uh, here. This is a Rutherford 5 patient. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now, now, now that Roman has done this uh, and shown you the level of plaque here, right, there, I want to go ahead and do a gradient. So what I'm going to do is, do we have a pressure wire, guys? Do we have a pressure wire? Yeah, give me a pressure wire. What, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a pressure wire distal and, and a pressure wire, and then we're going to, we, and the, and then we're going to balloon angioplasty uh, with the pressure wire in the vessel side by side. Because I want, I want to see exactly what, how, how we're improving the pressure distal to this vessel. Uh, b because the pressure wire is, is difficult for us to do this. Uh, so what we can do is we can actually treat this vessel first, Rum, in that particular area. Correct. And then do a pressure yeah, wire. So, let, so let's treat this vessel. So yeah. what was the vessel size in that area? <clears throat> hmm? It was about a, what was the vessel size? Like oh, okay, I'm being told six. it was about about five, five to six millimeters. millimeters. Yeah. Yeah. So, me... so, 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 what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and and what we're going to do at this stage is do an atherectomy in a balloon. And you could say, well, why are we doing atherectomy? So, Vishal, tell me about your treatment of choice, and then Raman, what would you guys do? Well, in this case, I mean, you can see it's a lot of uh, plaque in there. So, I would, I mean, the degree of calcification is not that pronounced, but because of plaque modification and getting enough luminal gain. I'm a proponent of doing an atherectomy. Now, the question is the data and not data. The atherectomy data and most of the data in peripheral world is more anecdotal and retrospective and not real randomized per se. But in this case, because it's a short segment lesion, trying to get a luminal gain, I would probably just do a directional atherectomy, cut where the plaque is, trying to avoid the normal segment, thereby decreasing the chances of significant dissection, and then hopefully uh, follow it up with a drug coated balloon. That would be my strategy, and then uh, take it from there, see how it looks. Yeah. So, so if I can push back on, on, on you guys, I mean, I think that, I think that you know, if you look at, you do have randomized control data with this particular lesion. Correct. Obviously, the impact SFA trial did include some, some CTOs of, of short segment, and 6.7 millimeter lesions uh, was the cutoff, and you have five-year reduction in TLR rates. Let me do this first. So in this, in this you could cut costs by doing just an impact uh, uh, DCP, DCP and then leave it alone. But I think the more important question is, is how much of this lesion we should treat. Yeah. So, so we know you have diffuse, but you have a total occlusion. So let's put the pressure wire down. Tell me when we can put the pressure let's, wire, guys. Let's do the balloon so, first. The yep. other question. Give so me that, a 5020 balloon, guys. 5020 for, by track. So focus on just that occlusion. I think we all agree. You may disagree on what the destination therapy is, but that definitely has to be treated. Plus minus atherectomy, plus minus stent, but definitely some drug-coated technology. But what about this diffuse long segment in, right. in the proximal? Well, that's that, the question. Because that, that, that looks significant on, or look, look moderately significant on the actual angiogram. So but one of the problems we this, have is that we don't have a way of assessing that yeah. non-invasively while we're in the vessel. I think this, so, is a, this is a good strategy to kind of so, see. So yeah, so let's do the balloon and then do a pressure wire distal. And we'll do a pressure wire pullback distal to proximal. Yeah. Okay. So let's get the 5015 track, please. Wire track, please. Right. So I think that's a good point. How about like, would you just do a straight up pullback gradient like how you did in the iliac? You treat the lesion. You put your mic catheter down in 035 and just do a pullback gradient and see where your step Wire's up is flush. and go from there. It's like a, it's like a poor well, man's pressure wire. Well, I, I totally agree. If you don't have, we're lucky enough to have pressure wire in a lab, and I think it's something that's underutilized in the peripheral. So I think I think we can do a balloon angioplasty with a 50, knowing that we're not. That's going to be not going to be our let's final therapy. Let's get a baseline. So first so the balloon the, that uh, oh, the just go, no, let's do, do this. Balloon, fix this because we and then we can do a pullback. So, so what we're doing now is we're it's using a 5015 by track, and and it, this is a 014 yeah. renal balloon that uh, is quite good because for us cardiologists, we uh, we tend to like monorail systems. Uh, obviously, Boston has excellent monorail systems as well, but a lot of the other balloons are over the, over over the wire. There's an older balloon. I'm an older guy. This is what I train with, so we use it. So, okay, that should be the lesion right there. You just passed it. Give a little dive, please. Yeah. Well. So we're gonna do a little road map here. Uh, OJ, can I have the thing? Can I get some? OJ, can I have the thing? Oh, well, you can inject. You can use right. this if you want. Can I get some 10 cc syringes? If Flora do it, you're on road map. So we're gonna go ahead and set it up. Ray, what's everything? Uh, oh, so we're not going right. We're not going to go? Okay. Yeah, so if it's, if it's not bleeding, just okay. talk to him about that. Go up. So we'll go up, oh, down. You can see now the balloon is just a 5-0 balloon. We might have to use a cutting balloon. Who knows? 
But Raman is going to hold a little negative pressure as we just go. Just get this open up. Oh, negative. Yep. Yeah. Keep going. There you go. We got it. So there you go. So we got this balloon up. You can see how tight this is. And you can see how significant this is. Still with Look the at waist. that, Flora. Still with the waist. Let me get oh, off the road, off road map. Hold on. How high are you? Um, there you oh, go. There we go. <laughs> Can I use this one? So let's leave it up for a second. And then, so it's a 5020. Um, you know, so so now save that image for us. You yeah, got it? Saved, okay, yeah. good. So down and walk it out. Let's do a DSA as soon as we walk out. You got it, got it, got it, got it. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. And then let's get the, uh, what's up with my pressure, guys? Uh, let's flush the sheet a little. Yeah. Uh, 10cc syringes with contrast. 10cc? Yeah. No, no. There's no. Okay. Give me a flush, please. Yeah. No, I don't, this no. is contrast here. Yeah, look at your flush. Limited okay. Got it. Right pressure now. wire flush. Flush, flush, flush. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Flush. Okay, contrast. we're going to flush the sheet, and we got a yeah, better waveform, oh, which is what we like. This? So now we're going to go ahead with a, we're going to take a DSA. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Okay. Yeah, to pardon some of the so extra steps our, here, we have is our, uh, is, our, our is our assist working or no? Uh, we're still working. Okay. It's Cindy? okay. We'll, we'll work with this in the meantime. Okay, nice. so we have a dissection, which we'll talk about. So we just used a 5-0 balloon, which is what the Ivis showed, but you can see it was quite tight lesion. So you could have argued that vessel prep might have worked here, but for such a short lesion, I don't think there's any data that would tell us vessel prep would work. So now we're going to go with the pressure wire whenever we're out. ready. Are we ready, guys? Ready with the pressure wire? So we've got to go side by side, Roman. Thank you. Do I have a uh, Spartacore? Oh, Why Spartacore? You can just no, wire, yeah, yeah. wire side this. by side. Yeah, side yeah. by side. So we're just going to go side by side. We're going to zero outside the sheet, and then, and then we're going to do a pressure wire pullback now that we've technically relieved that gradient. And remember, if you look at our arterial waveform, it's damped compared to our blood pressure because of that iliac, um, uh, what's it called, acuity of the angle of the iliac. So now Raman's going to go put the wire distal, and we're just going to zero at the, yeah, there we go. We're already zeroed, so that's good. So we're just going to, we can just cross it now, Roman. We already yeah. are equal to the other pressure. Let's just make sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's, that's uh, fine. Let's zero this guy. Yep, zero we're this. zeroed. It's, it's equal. 93, zero? 93. Yep, that's fine. All right. Very good. Let's go now. Cross it. Just have them fully do it. Very good. Good? Yep. We're pretty much the same. Now just uh, cross this lesion now. Yeah, lose the loop. So we're going to cross this lesion. Okay, take it down and then cross it down there, I guess. Oops. There you go. Good. So what's your cutoff for being significant? Well, you know, that's a that's great another. question. I mean, usually <laughs> around 20 millimeters of mercury is what we all tend to use. Ooh, yeah, yeah. So we're just going to cross this like lesion that. with a loop, which should be yeah. fine. Uh, and, and now we're going to lose the loop at this end. Now, look at that pressure difference just across the lesion. Just take it down. Yep, that's it. Good. Now, now look at that. So right now, you have a angiogram. Show the angiogram again, Vishal. Yeah. You have an angiographically looking perfect lesion with a balloon angioplasty. Physiologically, that lesion is not perfect. You have a 20-millimeter gradient. That means 91 to uh, what, 63. 60. Three. It's almost a uh, 30 millimeter gradient, 34, but the 35. systolic pressure is 150. So, so it's 90. It's almost what? Almost uh, double. So this is about a 60 millimeter gradient across this. So now Raman's going to pull this wire back and let's see where the gradient changes. Flora. So Raman is pulling the wire back. Just do a roadmap here for me so I can see where the, where the lesion is so we can for, for teaching purposes. Yeah. So we're just going to do a quick roadmap for you guys and gals. Just to take a look at where it is. Okay, there's our lesion, okay? So now we're going to come back. So as Raman pulls back, we're going to keep an eye on our tracing, okay? <laughs> and as you can see, if it <coughs> clears right there, okay? So improve. there, now it's, it's, it's dropped, but it's dropped to about 10. Uh, yeah, 10 right. millimeters. Flora, right. uh -huh. go up. All right, off, uh, off let, let's yeah, keep gonna... going until where it normalizes. A little higher up. Seven, yep, just keep yeah. pulling. First time, 50. Yep, I'm listening. Why? I need to know why. Say, I, say, I really need to know why. Keep coming back. I think it's now seven. Two. So basically, it's, it's basically six long, millimeters, five stopped, millimeters. Right? Yeah, now so here, so yeah. the argument could be like, why the don't we just fix this lesion? Yeah, rather, that's rather, normal. Ra now yeah. it's normalized, approximately. So let's yeah. do a picture here, guys. Let's see what we're looking at in that area. So the argument could be here, you fix two levels of, you fix the iliac, you fix the SFA, leave him alone, let's see how he does, rather mm -hmm. than do this. So, Raman, maybe for those at home, 
So this is the area that that diffuse tubular lesion, whether you want to fix or not. So at this area, it was about a five millimeter gradient, Vishal, right? Yeah. Pretty so much. five to seven millimeter, seven gradient. millimeter gradient. So you know, so Raman, question: Can you talk to them a little about restenosis rates uh, based on lesion length and the stent used, balloon used? Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I and mean, that's uh, a lot to talk about. But I think you, know, I think we'll go as far as for the drug coated te technology. Uh, long lesions, severely calcified lesions, always will have in almost every vascular bed will have the highest rates of restenosis. Um, but even just despite that, even in, in the long lesions, we still see that even with the Zilver and the DCBs, they still have relatively good um, uh, patency rates um, at one year. Now, I think the question would be like, in terms of uh, the other adjunctive therapy we do here, how can we affect that? Um, and, and I think if, uh, you know, if we talk about the distal lesion in isolation, a short, a short treatment uh, modality right at that focal lesion, would do would, would do very very well because it has a lot of things that are kind of in its favor to have a low restenotic rate. Does not have this is not calcified. It's short, uh, and it would also be treated very likely with just a simple drug coated technology, hopefully without any other form of scaffold if plus minus a separa if needed. The real question for me is if we choose to do this this proximal lesion. This is one of the ones that will, will result in uh, needing at least some form of a scaffold, likely, um, and it will be a relatively long lesion, at least 120, 140 centimeters, uh, uh, millimeters. Two, yeah. I think this, I guess it depends on how, how far right. along you go. So, I mean, I guess that's where it could, like, the, like how much do you really want to, get, to commit to treating this, knowing that it really only contributes a 10 to 12 millimeter gradient Watch across the, the, the entire lesion. Mm-hmm. So, so I, I also agree that a couple of things. Okay, one, one I think Raman hit the nose on the head, uh, or, or hit the head on the nose, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the, the bottom line is, you know, longer the lesion, the higher the restenosis. Second, you have randomized controlled trial data for both Zilver PTX <coughs> Imperial, which is the uh, which is the uh, what is it called Alluvia. Boston Scientific Alluvia Alluvia stent, yeah. as well as for 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 even a one year data with Stellarex, three year data with Stellarex, five of TLR data with Stellarex, but patency data at one year with Stellarex. Lutonics, as well as uh, impact. So, so now we have a lot of choices, right? So, there, if you saw, there was a gradient. So, so the question is, is there is there recoil or not? Which luck, which there is. Michelle, can you expand on the effect of recoil on DCB on the, some of the work that we've done here at Sinai? No, I mean, so we've uh, studied. We actually published with PK as the lead author uh, in Jack regarding uh, the failure or the mechanism of failure of DCBs and uh, how they work and what the mechanism is. And one of the mechanisms, like you talked about, is the recoil. And uh, in this case, again, looking at the, the data and everything, because it's a focal lesion, if you just uh, balloon it, the probably a patency rate being higher is much higher as compared to longer lesions, calcified lesions, and uh, uh, with the significant poor yeah. outflow. So so the significant uh, predictor of restenosis with DCB is going to be recoil. So here you have recoil and dissection. Unfortunately, we couldn't comment on dissection right. because a lot of the data was from the impact long study, which had 40% stent rate. But now, now the question here, because you have recoil, you have dissection, but you haven't done a DCB. So the idea here is it's a focal lesion. Uh, Raman, can you comment a little bit on um, on on the Zilver versus Luvia? Uh, you know, any, any studies out there that look at that, and also which stent you would choose? I mean, this is an area in the ductal canal. Rates of fracture may be higher. Would you choose a supera? Do DCB supera, or would you choose go for a DS, or would you want to Ivis and see what it is first? Uh, so I'll start from the end, go backwards. Uh, Ivis, I don't think it's going to add to this, this, this particular question you're asking, because I think we already know what the morphology is. I think we know that you need some drug therapy. So the question then goes to your second question about drug uh, versus a uh, drug, drug scaffold. Drug versus exactly. drug quarter balloon versus exactly. scaffold. I think in, in this particular area, as you're saying, this is a high flexion point. This is where the SFA actually bends whenever you sit. Um, and all that. So I think over here, I would actually choose to do a drug-coated technology, uh, drug-coated technology, mm -hmm. followed by Isopara should it be needed. Okay, because of the ductal canal. Exactly. So, so Raman, I mean, if I push back and I tell you, well, you know, if you look at the Zilver PTX study, uh, you know, there's one outlying study that talks about a 5% fracture rate. Majority of them Correct. is basically 1.8% at three years. It's very low. 
Plus, you're going to put a short stand. So, Vishal, maybe you can comment on that one-year data with Zilver versus Alluvia, uh, which was obviously published in Lancet yeah. a few years back. So, it was the imperial trial which actually compared Any use of messages? Alluvia and Zilver and actually showed Alluvia performed much better than... Yeah, As Alluvia talk? performed uh, better than Zilver at one year based on the, on the patency rate. Uh, and that's where they were uh, leaning towards. But in this case, I mean, I would probably defer a little bit in my treatment strategy if uh -huh. it was me. I would probably put a short drug-eluting stent here because you can see the dissection there is prominent in the entire long segment, which has diffuse disease. Then I'll probably use a long sure, DCB yeah. because now we have 260 uh, DCBs available. I mean, 250 DCBs available. So you, you can DCB a long segment. But if you're... My goal, I would probably go straight up uh, drug eluding scaffold in this case to give okay. it the best result per my for your in your hands and my I, perception. And I think I think that I think I'm gonna I'm gonna agree. I don't think there's a right answer because we don't have a ra randomized control trial. Obviously, I think this dissection grade uh, with, is a high dissection grade. It's got a cap on it, so majority of us would stent it. Um, I think that uh, I'm going to stick with kind of what Roman wanted to do. I like that idea of doing doing the uh, the alluvia. I mean, excuse me, doing the vessel prep followed by a short uh, uh, what is it called um, uh, supera. So, Roman, how do you choose your 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 stent with supera, and how do you prep the vessel? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so first, the drug te technology, you know, it all, all just depends on what you have in your lab. Yes, uh, especially are, at one year. Yeah. Um, we're also, like, very, very fortunate. We have, like, a little bit of everything. Um, uh, uh, I, I think as of right now, uh, we've been a high uh, impact volume uh, lab, and we're, we're slowly incorporating more and more of uh, the other companies' drug coded devices. I think it's good, you know, to always keep that in the back of mind as the data that that Vishal was just talking about. You know, at one year we did see that there was was better data with um, with Alluvia, but as far as long term data, what's available is really just mostly from the, the impact. impact group. So depends on which one you want to hang your hat on more confidently on. Um, I feel that the you know seventy percent, seventy two percent at five years patency for impact is is pretty is pretty good. Um, but I think that you know this a, a difference of a Measure few, the Ivis. a few a few percentage points between Alluvia and and Zilver at one year may not be the strongest uh, um, evidence to choose one over the other. Although it is statistically significant, Correct. you know. But question is what happens at, at five years, and we know the answer with one, and we don't know. With well, the other. we have TLR data with impact, not right. patency data. So, so Vishal, there question, is a, sorry, there's a yeah. question from the audience. They're asking how often do you use IBUS in your practice, and uh, except for defining certain mm -hmm. lesions, like what's your protocol or what's your algorithm of using IBUS? Well, I, I can be honest with you. I, uh, for all of us, I think in lesion diffuse lesions, I think you have to use IBUS to understand the plaque morphology and how obstructive it is. We use an, a combination of IBUS and physiology, and as Raman and Vishal pointed out. You could easily go with a end hole catheter and do a pullback gradient and see it, although it may not be as accurate as a pressure wire. Uh, you know, obviously, Phillips, uh, th there's data with with Ivis and DCB uh, in the Jack Intervention paper out of Australia that that uh, that, that showed significant patency with uh, with Ivis and DCB versus just Angio and DCB. Now, whether you believe the data or you the data is uh, you know subject to some criticism is fine, but it's a great it's a great trial, randomized controlled trial, and really. It really showed a significant benefit for IVIS. Uh, Sisemski, our good friend Eric, has, has published multiple showing that IVIS improves outcomes uh, with uh, with uh, with the all uh, with a lot of the modalities of treatment. So therefore, I think that what we need to do here is kind of decide what we want to do. Uh, so, so to me, how often do I use it? I use it in, in right now in, in ambiguous lesions. I use it in, in in lesions where I'm trying to understand where it is. But in in these type of decision making, we always use IVIS with physiology. Right. Michelle, yourself? No, I. Agree. I agree with PK, definitely. I mean, physiology nowadays, with even we've learned from coronary, it's the physiology mm -hmm. that really determines your treatment modality. So like Raman showed us through the IVAS, there's disease all over the segment. So yeah. do we start ballooning, stenting the whole entire segment? And now we put a patient under a metal jacket and increased chance of ISR versus just doing focal stenting, getting the gradient out physiologically, thereby helping in the healing, as well as not jeopardizing the future path. So I agree. I mean, IVAS gives us a good eye. ISR, what's the, is it neoatherosclerosis? Is it acute thrombosis? Is it a combination of both? And in these patients as well. So some cases I do, I would probably say 25% of my practice, but rest all is mostly angiographically slash yeah. luminographically driven. Yeah. Okay. All right, I, great. I think the, one of the main points which uh, Dr. Krishna brought up in the beginning is that 
one of the problems with, with IBIS is that you see a lot more lesions than you, what you had expected, Correct. which makes, unfortunately, your clinical decision-making a little bit more challenging, considering that there's no clear uh, algorithms or stepwise fashion way to interpret this data to result in improved outcomes. So now we see all this long prox, you know, uh, segmental lesions of the prox and mid, even, even distal to the actual lesion. It, it you want to itself. do 7 -0. So we do. 7 -0. 60 guys? Yeah. And I think I agree. That's the reason P PK was talking about the paper of randomized trial, which actually showed that the patients in which they did IVUS, 79% discrepancy in what they thought it looked like, either be the diameter, either be the length, either be the dimension, versus what it really turned out on IVUS, like yeah, more of the lesion it. stuff. So yeah. you're absolutely right. It's an extra yeah. set of but sometimes you tend to overread and overdo stuff. Yeah. And so one of the things that uh, you know we used to do, which I think was wrong, is that we used to remove and touch this, uh, the obviously the balloon. So you know, there's a current study that's out that shows that more manipulation of the balloon by by your hands causes uh, less efficacy with uh, with impact. Really? So I'm just going to give Roman a, a little a dry gauze to be able to load the impact, and then and then and he's holding it like an ice cream cone exactly. <laughs> don't let it. So fall. we decided to choose a 60 because we know that I think. A uh, 40 or a or, uh, 40 Supera may be enough. And we decided to go with a 7 because you have a 6.3 by 6.3 Lumen, which I think is uh, it's probably going to be able to take a 60 Supera. So, Robin, you, I don't think you talked about vessel prep. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, um, uh, Ray Lozano is uh, uh, the nurse practitioner who uh, was crucial to almost all of our cases. It was one of the first people to, to tell me. Whenever Ready? you're going with the Supera and you're planning on it, Flora. just absolutely prep this vessel more Flora. than you could mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. even ever even think of. There you go. Which means okay, that die. No, matter, Let's no matter what vessel you size you think you're, you're going for, yep, that's, right? yeah, whatever, that's perfect. Don't, no don't cover the what size you're, yeah. you're going for, let's say you're going for a 5.5 five Supera, 6.0 Supera, your pre-dilatation balloon mm -hmm. has to be, should be nearly mm -hmm. one millimeter bigger. Mm -hmm. That allows for the Supera to be deployed nominally without Little really die. any real issue, die. no oh, elongation, yes, no, um, um, you go up. Uh, no shortening. And the result is, is always quite nice. But I think the one of the keys to the delivery of, of this, this uh, stent is vessel prep uh, without any question. Mm -hmm. um, and we're seeing now that this, this 7 0 balloon is looking six. This, okay. A little, little bit of pain there. You're doing great, my friend. So it's a, it's a large balloon, which we know because we want to put a larger Supera. One thing, one thing what, still, so, so, so what Raman was saying is very important is that is that the vessel prep should be should equal the outer luminal diameter, should be 0.5 above the outer luminal diameter of your stent. So a 6 0 stent is you want to go with a 7 0 vessel prep. So people would argue that, that, uh, that the DCB should not be used as a vessel prep and you should use a regular balloon. I do that when my final therapy is going to be DCB. So here my final therapy is not DCB. My final therapy is going to be used as vessel prep, and I'm definitely going to use a scaffold at this level. So now I'm going to go ahead and remember this, this is not vessel beautification. You, you may have a, a, a lesion now that you're not happy with. You may look like, look at this, there's a large you know, ballooned out still, segment at that area, but you're that's okay. As long as your gradient is gone and the wound is healed, it doesn't really matter. So yeah. now, now we're doing this. So now I'm going to get a 60 of uh, uh, 40, uh, 60 60 Supera, right? Do you want to go with the 60 or 40, 60, right? 60. So 60 let's take 60 a picture. Supera. Yeah, we'll take a picture. So we'll now, take a picture. What, uh, what's the consensus on this proximal lesion? Who I mean, yes, I, who I says no. Yeah, I think for me, it's uh, it's dependent. The gradient is insignificant. It's eight, eight, eight to nine millimeters. I think if we, if we increase the law, we also have obviously a, a large sheet up and over a, a bifurcated arch. I would wait and watch him. You know, I think he'll do fine. 60? No, it's 6'5". Six, six, you don't have 6'0". 6'0". 6'5 is going to be longer. 6'5 is too long. Yeah, too okay. big. Okay. So again, as you know, we are, we're challenged, as you can see, with different sorts of things. Yeah. Real life challenges. Uh, real life problems here, even here at Sinai. What do you have now? It's a long 6080. 6080, that's fine. Yeah. Give us a 6080. Okay, we'll deal with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to probably end up stacking it, uh, which will allow us to do it. But don't open it until we take a picture, please. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I think... Uh, that is about... We leave it up for about three minutes. Is that three no. minutes, Michelle? Almost. Another yeah. 20 seconds left. 20 I seconds. asked okay. that because... Come down now. Down. As, as we were talking about, the mm -hmm. the data gathered from the IVIS, that proximal segment, save the majority this, of the lumen was the two, to almost yeah. maybe two and a half or, millimeters. Yeah. Right. Four. So it was... It's it's quite small. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry. You got it. Uh-huh. Okay. So would you feel comfortable leaving that? Knowing, I would because at yeah. the end you just want a gradient, right? The highest gradient was here. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, okay, okay. Stay still, my friend. Everything's going good. Okay. 
Maybe we ruptured. Who knows? Roadmap? No. We'll see. Ready? Okay. A little more? Okay. okay. Good. Uh -huh. Roadmap? Yeah, it was pain in the groin, Roman, your hand. Okay, hand. Yeah. Ready? Uh -huh. Object. Laura? Don't move. Don't move. Oh, it looks beautiful. Okay, one second. Know. Off Let's roadmap. We yeah. do it again. Let's do a DSA regular. Okay. One second. Let's do a DSA. Okay, open a 6080, please. No, DSA? Uh-huh. Hold on. Let's go. DSA. DSA. Very nice. So, yeah, so we're going to go from that dissected segment distal to that dissected segment proximal, and we're going to stack it. So let's go ahead and give them the 6080. So let me be a devil's advocate. I'll leave it, huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I you, don't know. You, you could leave it. <laughs> oh, you, you could actually, you could, you yeah. could say, I'm going to leave it. There's no data with dissection grade and, and, non and occlusion. <coughs> Impact only had a 5% stent rate. <coughs> so... <clears throat> you could leave it. To me, there's complex dissection there. If there's no gradient, you could argue. But I, I'm, I, in my lab, sure. with a guy with CLI, I would want to stent this. Mm -hmm. So let's do a quick roadmap here. Actually, yeah, once you get there, we, we, can, do do a, we can do a smart mask here only. Okay, do a smart mask. Hold on one second. So we're going to do a smart mask, and then okay. we're going to go okay. ahead and, uh, and then take a, take a quick... Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, we just want to make sure we cover that distal lesion. It's basically from that distal dissection to the proximal. Yeah. And you'll see how beautifully this tent performs. Uh, okay. Keep coming. Okay. He has obviously moved. We're going to have to do another smart mask. That's okay. I got it. Yeah. Yep. Go. So here comes the superior. It's going to look long. Okay, right there. Stop there. Good. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and come off it. You can even yeah. do a roadmap again. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Go Flora? Yep. Okay, roadmap, roadmap. on. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So since we're planning on stacking it, we're just gonna we're gonna be a little long there. That's okay. Nope, we gotta go further down. Oh, you're way down. Yeah, right there. Oh, you're perfect. Yeah, right there. You're perfect. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you guys go a little bit down. Go ahead, uh, Vishal. I want you to deploy it. Oh. So we're gonna get oh, Vishal to deploy it. Oh. And, uh, no, 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 no. It's okay. Everybody's fighting over People deployment. <laughs> So, guys, when you deploy, very, very important. <laughs> Vishal, so the key, what I'm just going to talk through it. Vishal is going to get it going first. Once he gets it going, we're, we're, we're going to go ahead and uh, and uh, and deploy the Supera. <clears throat> so that right now he came off roadmap, but he wants to land, stick the landing zone. So you want the Supera to yeah. come out, and that's going to be your problem. So when you, when you do these yeah. large Superas, you need to zoom up high. Yeah. And yeah. now, yeah. now Robin's going to give a little bit of die. See. Yep. It's going to give a little bit of dye, and Let's then the dye is going to tell you exactly where the, that dissection is. And you can see the dissection is actually further back, so he's going to pull back a little bit right there. Yep, I like that. And you're going to have to sometimes allow a little bit of elongation to occur prior distally. So as it starts to flower, he'll pull it back. That's Yeah, you got to come back a little bit. Like a see, right there. Now you see, now it's starting to deploy, and now it will elongate slightly right there. Right Perfect. There, right there. So you'll see as it comes out. Uh, once it catches, it's going to become butter. So right now he's got to let it come back, come back a little bit. Yeah. Right there. Perfect. Now come forward, let it come out slowly. Very slow throws, guys. Very slow. That's it. See? Now he's doing a very slow throw. This next throw is going to allow it to catch it. Forward pressure with your left hand. Yeah. Right? Forward yeah, pressure with your left good. hand. Beautiful. So there he goes. So now he's going to try to stack it. See, now, now you have a little bit of elongation distal, which is very hard with this tent to avoid. And now Vishal is going to try to just stack it. We prepped it so well with a 7-0 balloon uh, that I don't think this will be a problem at all, especially there's no eccentric calcium. And, 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 and again, as, as, he, as he's deploying it, with Raman will give it a little dye proximally for us to see it. So you can see this is really stacked real hard. And you can see as he's coming... Where's the proximal right there, right? No, a little further higher up. Higher, 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 up. higher. Quite a bit. Quite a bit, quite a bit higher. So yeah. you're going to maybe not have to stack it that much. Yeah, I know. I don't want to stack yeah. it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Show me a little higher, Rowan, since it's coming out like butter. Okay, now let's do a quick uh, uh, picture. Yeah. Josh. Yep. At least we get to see where the ending point is. See, right there. That's oh, the ending point. So you've got to go stack quite a bit, Vishal. you got to go up to that collateral. To yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So you got to keep keep going. So you got a long way to go. So you might as well not stack. You can pull back a little bit, and then stack at the end. So people worry about stacking versus elongation. I don't worry because these stents, once they're prepped well, will do really really well. 
So you, you can see that it's not going to elongate. You see how easily it's yeah. deploying. You know that the distal is a little elongated, which I told you is going to happen. But I think over, over the time, this is going to straighten out, at least in our hands, that we've seen these patients come back. The beauty of what Raman and I talked about is something we firmly believe. Uh, both of us published a paper just recently uh, looking at our data of 600 patients who had uh, a DCB used as vessel prep for Supara. And that actually equaled, uh, reduced the, uh, the, uh, the, the TLR rates when when you elongated the supera so it kind of goes logical now now you have to give him some diorama yeah so now it's, he's coming to the yeah, end so we need to see where, where it is yeah, it is no, so that's the part that we have to do and i think that's good yep you gotta come down you gotta stack more yeah you see that at that collateral you're fine just keep yep that's it beautiful so you can see here vishal is doing such a phenomenal job running well, you know, roman did a great job crossing so I think I think and the eye discussion was phenomenal. So we have ten minutes left. So we're gonna now you need to elongate a little bit, brother. Yeah. Yep. Along, yep. Pull it. See, and so is conformable, right? So even if you miss a little bit proximally, I'm not too worried here. So so he's gonna pull this, and then it's gonna just <sighs> it's just gonna be beautiful at the end. You're gonna see. So here it comes, and the supera is. Adjusting the uh, the yeah. length of the supera mm -hmm. after deployment is still possible. So I think it's also important for everyone to know that there are a few tricks that you can use to make the supera be closer to its nominal length. You know, that's usually, I feel that we may or may not end up doing something like that here. Yeah, let's balloon balloon. So now let's do a quick picture. pressure wire, guys. Yeah. Take a picture. Yep. So you can see the supera looks beautiful. Look at that. Just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. He blew it out of the water as he usually does. So now, now we're going to go ahead and uh, put a pressure wire down. We're going to flush this. Guys, flush it. Um, you know, I, I, you know, you, you, for science, we can do the pressure so. wire. I think for the sake of time, I'll just tell you guys we're going to do the pressure wire. So right now we're done. We're going to just show you the runoff to the foot. Yeah. You know, it's already uh, 10 minutes to go, and I don't want to beleaguer the, the point here. So you see that we, we will check it, and we will make sure that our pressure wire shows that everything is fine guys can you move this please i'm moving it with my camera uh-huh always do runoff pre and post you know it's very very important Ugh. we implore our fellows uh to go ahead and do runoffs pre and post as well oh uh, well, let's just do come this. less LA, I guess. Huh? come a little bit less yeah and now we bring it closer yeah. okay let's shut her in roman Come down okay, ready, Cindy? Yeah. So beautiful flow. Much faster, Definitely much more better. robust. Much more robust. You can see the wound is wound blush is excellent. So I think I think at this stage we're pretty much done, but we're just gonna do a quick pressure wire pullback. Let's flush the flush the catheter, please completely. Yeah. Flush it. <clears throat> down. You have the photo? Yeah. Copy. Excellent. Stop. Okay. Okay. Zero, zero both guys. I should have been zero before. Uh, Flush again. <clears throat> no, we still have. We still may have some work to do. So no, we may do it zero, offline here. We should have zeroed yep. as soon as it came out. Mm. Pull back now. We didn't zero it. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, uh -huh. we didn't zero. Uh, we didn't zero. Right. I want to do Point. proximal zero first. Let's do a proximal zero. We didn't zero yeah. when we came out. Take it up. Pull back. Let's yeah. zero. Yeah. Okay. Zero We're going to do a proximal both? zero. Zero both, guys. No, it's right. Mine, I closed it. There's clearly a gradient, so we're going to have to do more. But again, we could be very specific rather than put long stents. Perfect. Let's see. Good, right? Yep. Uh, almost, almost. Almost. Yeah. Okay. Fine. We'll keep it at consistent uh, five yeah, different. There it is. Now we're good. Now we're good. Now we're good. We're good. Okay. okay. Good. Okay. Let's go down now. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's, that's okay. It. Good. So, so now pull back from here. Let me just get uh -huh. this further. Good. So you can see there is clearly a gradient. So this is good. Now we're going to see what else we need to treat. Just pull back. More proximally. Yeah. Pull back. 
What, what double- I wonder how much of this could just be because of the stiffness of this new stent. I don't think it's going to be much. But- well, it'll change right there if it's a stent. It's not Correct. the stent. See? Not so there's a lesion. So it's the proximal, proximal lesion, lesion is right very here, significant. To it. We still Keep have going. About a 15 millimeter. Yeah. Yep. This is very important. Remember, we had like two spots which looked like really, this nasty. First screw no, this is not. This is not it. Where we were seeing stuff. So right here. Now it jumps. No, bit. keep going. That's right the spot. That's the spot. Yep. Now, okay, now, do, a, me, now do a quick. Test, now, test. No, now do a quick. Oh, okay. Now do a yeah, quick DSA. DSA. So from the tip of the wire, it's that diffuse tubular yeah. lesion. Yeah. So anyway, it's it's five two. So now we're gonna go ahead and get a get, get us a five zero DCB. A 50, uh, uh, 150 uh, DCB? Zilver, maybe this one. No, we'll just would DCB it. I think this will be DCB. Five zero one fifty DCB, guys. So now we're going to put a drug-coated balloon here, and then, we'll, and, then, and then we'll do another quick uh, uh, FFR. We have five minutes, guys. Let's go. So we'd like to, we'd like to get this done. Get, get the FFR wire ready, please, to go back in. Yeah. All right. Like Pika said, minimal manipulation. And Roman doesn't have an ice cream, so what No, 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 leave that on. You can take it off as it goes in. Yep. That's why they put that. That one came off on the last one. This one, it won't come off. Yeah. Okay. So Roman can do the peel away as he goes in. So can you show where we're going to... Uh... I think we just... Okay, from, from that screw up. Okay. Now we do the peel away. We've got five minutes. We, got, we can get this done yeah, in yeah. five minutes. Mm-hmm. I got it, brother. Good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, a little bit further. Yep. Five hundred one fifty. Now let's look at the ostium a little bit. A little dye in the ostium. Yeah. Let's make sure we get the proximal. So I'm actually okay with that. Let me give you a little bit of angle. Roman, watch that. I'm actually okay with that. Let me give you a small test. Roman, flora. Mm -hmm. Your own flora. Yeah. I'll come I back a little bit. Come back just a touch. That's good. Okay. One second. Perfect. Come back. Going forward. Mm-hmm. Go up. So you can see now we decided to use a DCB. So this is now following the impact. Well, there's your lesion. You can see it's quite significant, right? So there it is. And now we're going to go th leave this up for three minutes. So since we have five <laughs> minutes left, we're just going to leave this up for three and then take a quick, quick picture and we'll see how it looks. So we did a proximal impact. And how we did it was we used imaging and pressure to go ahead and tell us uh, to tell us that we actually have a lesion that's quite significant, even though we opened the CTO. I think this is why f using physiology as part of your, your armamentarium to make decisions on complex cases is very, very important for your patients. So at this stage, you can see that this is up, uh, and we're going to watch paint dry. Any comments, Roman, on, on your thoughts on this? Yeah, why not in this segment go straight with the drug eluting stent? You could. It's a less fracture rate. It's a low fracture rate zone. I think you're totally right. Yeah. I think you're totally right. You definitely could have argued to do it. We definitely could have done it. Vishal? Yeah. So I would have run the other way in this way. I would have I would, I would, have ballooned the way we've done it. And then if you have to, we'd probably spot stand if I, I find any flow-limiting dissection. Again, like PK mm -hmm. talked about, if it's not a complex dissection, if it's a non-flow-limiting lesions with a length of 150, I would not put a 150 lens scaffold or 140 if silver comes in 140 lens scaffolds, but do a DCB patency rate, let the wound heal, mm. and then of course you evaluate the patient based clinically Can and by ultrasound. Yeah. So so let's talk a little bit of wound healing in DCB. Any wound any wound. any concern about the uh, Im uh, impact uh, excuse me the uh, impact deep trial that that looked at uh, 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 what is it called wound healing in DCB? You remember that was the one that the second old second balloon was taken off the market. We shall any comments. So no that? so they are asking if you have a 250 balloon available in the lab and what if you have used a 250 to begin with to cover the CTO segment as well as the segment up here would that be in a keeping in mind the economics of uh, of oh, a yeah. procedure. Well I mean I get, I think that's the problem. I mean the longer le the longer the lesion you tackle the more the issues you have and the idea is if the lesion is not physiologically significant it's a philosophical argument. Yeah. I mean some people would say I'll just use a 250 I'm done with it. But we know the 250 impact doesn't stay as long as a, you know, a uh, sure. whatever, 6.7 millimeter impact as per the impact as of a trial. I think the other part is that, you know, we have also some objective information. It's a very good, good question, but I think there's, 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 there's that part. And there's also the fact that objectively the size of the vessel at that, CC, at that CTO segment was actually six, six, seven, almost, uh, almost seven, seven millimeter, millimeter. With, but the seven millimeter DCB, the proximal measurements were much closer, much closer to, to a five, five. five. 
right? Yeah, so that, so, that, so, that, so that size mismatch, if you, one would be either over-treated or one would be under-treated. Or one would be dissected, you end up with a full dissected. metal jacket. No, exactly, but yeah. but then that reinforces the whole idea that the disease is extending more Remember? proximally because usually the vessels taper down. They don't yeah. become, usually, they're not usually small it's, and suddenly it's, become it's big. Opposite. Agreed. It's mostly post-stenotic dilatation if you see, then it makes sense. But but you remember, our I think the more significant lesion was distal. That's Correct. why our proximal gradient wasn't bad. Right. But then after we did our proximal step gradient, up. it was a huge step up. Right. So now we're going to do another quick um, pressure wire after taking a picture. Uh, you know, obviously you could talk about tax stents, other stents, but we don't use that. No. I think it's a great stent. It's, it's got a role in what we do, but not really for our lab. We have so many stents. So at this stage, we, we're just going to go ahead and just take a picture okay. and then picture. physiologically mm -hmm. treat go. this. So what's, what's, uh, yes, what is yes, the mm -hmm. pharmacotherapy yeah. post? Yeah. Post intervention here. See, this is what we were concerned about. Yeah. So we have big dissections. Long dissection uh, plates. Like oh. long dissections. But uh, but again, there, there, there does not seem to be recoil, but let's see what the gradient is. Okay. So the this idea is the here line. is you're going to have to be really That's careful right. crossing this. You don't want to sort yeah. of pick yeah. up a, a dissection plane. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. This one we're probably not going to be able to oh, you keep it yeah, close. Yeah, it is on. Make sure that we don't yeah, yeah. Uh, wire the same way that we have been wiring, which has been very uh, a little more aggressive than you will see in the coronaries for sure. But I don't think we're going to be able to use Let's do it then. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. I think it'll let's, go. uh, let's zero, guys. Zero. I'm going to let him wire mm -hmm. Okay. So let's equalize here. Equalize. So we have one minute left for the uh, everybody at home. What we're going to do is, if we don't have a uh, a true, uh, if we don't have a gradient, we're done. If Equalize. we have a gradient, then then we're it is open. Yeah, we're closed. Then then it's we're going to go ahead and place the scaffold at this area. Sorry. Okay. Okay. It's Perfect. one to one. Perfect. Okay. Let's see if we can do this more safely. See, I already don't like that. So yeah, this uh, this wire, this wire is quite beat up. I've seen has, better has days. Been through a lot. <laughs> yeah, so this is part of the problem. We could try it with a straight catheter, but anyway. So for now, just because we're times up, we're gonna go ahead and 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 check with the pressure with the catheter, and then okay. and then we'll we'll decide uh, what we're gonna look like. Think, uh, uh, nope, you're on the plane. So it looks like it, it may end up being a dissection with the wire we're going to have yeah, to deal with. So works. check it with a catheter, and then if we have to stent, we stent. So we hope that you've enjoyed this peripheral case and you had some good learning points from it. And I uh, thank Vishal and Karthik, as well as obviously Dr. Sharma uh, and, uh, and all the team here at Sinai, Elizabeth, and all our techs and everyone. So we'll see you next week with a little bit more complicated case uh, for sure. So thank you again.